Hello everyone, Z Crazy G here. Um, hope you're having a really nice day. Uh, and today I wanted to try a new video idea for a concept that I've been thinking about. And this idea is um, called A Year On, as you may have seen in the title. Basically, I was thinking about my bite-sized reviews and essentially the reason I do them is because they're there to act as a sort of smaller less stressful to edit bit of content that I can do in between my more heavily edited videos, you know, my videos on on like PS1 games and older games and that stuff. And I sort of... And the whole point of Bite Size Reviews is mainly for me to give my opinion on more newer and modern games that I play. And it sort of dawned on me, well not really dawned on me, but I just sort of realised that yeah, I don't really play enough modern games to keep a consistent amount of bite-sized reviews going. So I needed something that I could do that was less heavily edited, a bit more, so I was still, still talking about modern games. So I decided I needed to do something that was still not that stressful or heavily edited to do. And I decided on this concept called A Year On. Basically, I'm gonna be using this show to talk about games that I played that, well, that I played, released about roughly a year ago or so. And mainly looking at how they hold up today. And I'll be looking at games that I have reviewed over the past year. So stuff like Ukulele, um, South Park The Fractured But Whole, A Hat In Time. I will be going over several of these in the near future. Basically, the reason I decided to do this is because I think there's a big difference in the experience of playing a game for the first time and then playing it a second time. Especially when a significant amount of time has passed. A lot can change for a game over a year. Um, I mean, uh, games tend to have a lot of patches and fixes done to them, a lot of tweaks to mechanics to improve on certain aspects, and of course, um, DLC seasons to add new content to the game. And so the experience of playing a game quite a significant amount of time later, a year later let's say, will be different from how you play it the first time. And the first game I decided to do this with is Crash Bandicoot The Insane Trilogy. Now Crash Bandicoot is a series that is near and dear to me. I was born in 1998 so I just kind of missed the PlayStation 1 era. But my family owned a PlayStation 2 so we could play both PS1 and PS2 games and thankfully my brother, whose PS2 it was, um, he did play a lot of PS1 games, which is where my love for it stemmed from, playing PS1 games with him, but also playing on the PS2 as well. And I mainly started my love of Crash with um, CTR, fantastic game to start with. I absolutely love Crash Team Racing. And then, um, a bit of a surprise, the first main series Crash game I played was The Wrath of Cortex. Not, not, not the greatest way to start the series. I don't think it's a bad game as such. It's not good either. It's very average. Uh, that's a, a topic for another day though. But then yeah, after that, um, I also experienced Twin Sanity as well. Uh, also, I did dabble in Crash of the Titans a little. But yeah, yeah, mainly after Wrath of Cortex and CTR, I did go back to visit the original trilogy. I found some old copies of the game that my cousins owned and they just, they just gave the copies to me to play. And um, I started with Crash Bandicoot 2, great one to start with, and then I moved to Crash 3, and then to Crash 1. So, yeah, as you can imagine, playing Crash 1 after having played the, just let's be honest, the far better sequels, it's certainly a bit of a damning experience. <laughs> but yeah, a lot of my love for Crash stemmed from that, and it's near and dear to my childhood, and near and dear to me in my gaming hobbies now. So, as you can imagine, when E3 2016, was it, was it 2016? Yeah, 2016 came along and Sean Layden came on stage, they played the Crash Bandicoot theme tune and they announced that the first three Crash games, the original trilogy, were being, I think, what, what did he say? It was remastered from the ground up. Essentially, they were remaking the games from scratch. And, oh my god, I got so excited. Just, I was so happy to have Crash back in, in just the modern gaming industry. It, it was kind of unheard of to have a major 3D platforming franchise like that, especially in today's gaming climate, uh, which which is great because I think the 3D platform is coming back. I mean, 2017 was a great year, you know, with Ukulele, Hat in Time, Mario Odyssey, and the remasters of Crash. But yeah, anyway, after that E3 conference, I got so, so excited. And um, a year later, when it came out in June 2016, not, not about 2016, 2017. In June 2017, when it came out, I played it and, oh, I just, fell in love with the Insane Trilogy, and I did my bite-size review on it, which came out, didn't come out until about August, I think. 
Yeah, I, I kind of slacked on that one, my bad. But yeah, I gave it a 10 out of 10, and you know what? Spoiler alert, but for the end of this video, I still stand by that rating. I still genuinely love the Insane Trilogy. And yeah, with this whole concept of a year on only, and by the way, you may notice these videos are going to be unscripted. That should be obvious already, considering my horrific awkwardness right now. But yeah, I felt it'd be good just to get my raw thoughts on this, you know, at just whatever comes to my head. But with the Insane Trilogy, I'd say a fair amount has changed over a year or so. There's been a, I think, a few tweaks and patches over the years, but also the advent of um, DLC in the form of Stormy Ascent and Future Tense, and also with it being released on other platforms, on the Nintendo Switch, Xbox um, One and um, PC. Now, I haven't played it on Xbox One or PC, but when it came out on other consoles, I did get it on Nintendo Switch, mainly because I do, I do go up to London twice a week, and, you know, train rides, you need something to do, so I got the Insane Trilogy and I had a blast of it on Switch. Now, just so you know, I will be using gameplay for the Insane Trilogy, but since I was only using my Switch on the go, I do not have gameplay of the Switch version, so you will be seeing the PS4 version. So yeah, um, let's just get into it. Crash Bandicoot, the Insane Trilogy. Um, I've played this two more times since I first played it in from June 2017. I played it once again on PS4, I think it was in December of 2017, and then again, yeah, I played it again when I had it on Switch. It, it was, yeah, yeah, when it came out in um, June 20, 2018 this year, yes. But yeah, um, playing the Insane Trilogy again, I still love it, and I would still say it's the definitive way to play the free Crash games. I know there are a few things that have been said about the Insane Trilogy, some less positive things, um, just before we go into each, I will go into each game individually, like I did in my bite size review, but just before that, I do want to go over the more general aspects, and I do want to address the main thing that people seem to have an issue with, is the new control scheme. I, I don't get where the hate's coming from, I thought it was absolutely fine, I love it. Now, I know a lot of people have said it's different in a sense, that, um, it's something to do with his jump arc, I think, it's like when he jumps, he jumps the same way, but um, he falls faster, and apparently people say it messes up with their timing. And um, I would be lying if I said I hadn't noticed something like that. Yeah, I do definitely agree. It does feel slightly different the way he moves. But um, after a few levels, I got used to it very quickly, and I adapted to it very nicely. And I think they control well. It's very quick. It's very responsive. You feel the weight of Crash very nicely. I don't see an issue here. Um, I don't think the jump the new jump arc delay is is that bad of a thing i really don't get why people seem to see it as much of an issue as it is um yeah it can throw you off your timing if you're used to playing those games on the ps1 versions and you know you're used to you're used to sort of timings when you play those levels but when you're playing it on this game because of that jump arc it puts you off your timing due to the different speed at which he falls i, I can't remember what it is but yeah it can put you off your timing i do get that but um i think overall the controls are fine uh, there's also another thing about his um his hitbox apparently in the old games it used to be square whereas in the insane trilogy it's oval and people have been moaning that the hitbox um Apparently, apparently it sucks, apparently it makes platforming harder. And uh, I remember seeing this video, um, Cadicris was talking about this on um, his Unpopular Gaming Opinions, and he showed this side-by-side -side comparison of someone that someone had made, of um, it, was, it was on the high road, I think, where they were standing on the rope, at, well, on the rope of the bridge, and um, it, they, showed, so they showed the PS1 version and the Insane Trilogy version, and the character just jumping in place over and over and over, and eventually on the Insane Trilogy he fell off. And people, uh, and I looked up that video, and people were in the comments complaining about I'm moaning about the hitbox. Like, why would you be jumping in that in that one place anyway? Uh, um, I, I don't think the hitbox is that big of an issue. Again, like the like the jump arc, I got used to it over, after playing a few levels. It really isn't that bad. And I think because the controls are now consistent over all three games, he feels the same. For all three games, granted in Crash 2 and 3 you have the more expanded moveset, but the basis and the feel of how he controls is the same in all three games. I think that certainly helps you get used to it and adapt to it a lot more. And yeah, I really enjoyed it. I don't really see the issue that people have. Again, maybe that's just me. If, if, you, if you really don't like them, I'm sure you have, I'm sure some people will just disown them and no matter how much they play it, they just can't get used to it. I understand that. For me, I don't see the issue here. Um, let's also talk about it, because this is a remake, it's a remaster, and the way the game looks and sounds and 
everything and the performance wise is important. Um, the game looks bloody great. Oh, I'm, uh, the graphics, it goes for a very cartoony ish sort of style. Uh, I mean, when you look at the cutscenes, it looks, it looks as good as an animated film. It looks wonderful. Um, Crash. People have said like his fur, like the fur effects on him are a bit strange. I don't really get that. Um, the character designs are really good. They're really faithful. One or two characters do look a bit strange. I won't deny. Um, I think Entropy looks a tiny bit weird. I think it, I don't, his face looks a bit. It, it tries to look a bit more realistic, and it, it, he looks a tiny bit odd. I, I would say, but um. Aside from, that, aside from that, I don't really think any of the characters look bad at all. I really, I really like their redesigns. The voice acting as well, I really like. Now, the majority of the voice actors aren't the originals. Actually, I don't think there is an original voice actor in it. The majority of the voice actors are the ones from Twin... Not Twin Sanity. Well, actually, yeah, Lex Lang's from Twin Sanity, actually. Um, the majority of them are from the... It's the Mind of Mind of a Mutant and Crash of the Titans cast. And when I first heard that, I was a bit skeptical, but uh, it's amazing what voice direction can do. A lot of the actors, even though they, they've they done these voices in a certain way in the Titans games, they've actually altered it, they've actually changed their performance or just done it differently, so it's more akin to how the original voices were. Like, um, let me think, um, Greg Eagles, who does Aku Aku in the Insane Trilogy, when he did it in Mind of a Mutant, he played it very much like he like, like he played Grimm in the Grimm Adventures of Billy and Mandy. He was very Rastafarian. He played it a lot like that. But um, in the Insane Trilogy, he plays it a, a bit more. He puts a lot more of a deep and whimsical voice on to be a lot more like Mel Winkler was in the trilogy. Same with John DiMaggio. He was a bit more. He was a bit more cartoony. He sort of did like a grouchiest kind of voice, a, a bit more light-hearted, a bit a bit less sort of demonic, shall we say. But um, when it came to the Insane Trilogy, he made it more akin to what Clancy Brown originally did. Uh, Lex Lang as Dr. Neocortex, I absolutely love him. Granted, I wasn't sure since he does the the comedic Cortex, especially in Twin Sanity, fantastically. He nails Cortex there because the writing is designed, it's, it's written for him to be comedic. I wasn't sure how he'd do with the bit more slightly, shall we say, slightly more serious Cortex in the in the original trilogy that Clancy Brown did. But Lex Lang does a great job. God, who else is there? Debbie Debrie does a great job as Coco. Um, Maurice LaMarche, even though it's quite, even though it's very different from um, Embryo in the original games, he still does a really good job. There's one voice actor, I think his name, I can't remember his name, but he does Entropy and Engine. Um, he's not from the Titans games. I think it was Nolan North who did Engine in the Titans games. I think this guy was from Wrath of Cortex and he did both Engine and Entropy and he comes back to do them again here. I found that a bit of a strange choice, but he does a good job. But yeah, overall, um, presentation wise, it's very good. Oh, actually, no, the music. Um, the soundtrack sounds really damn good. They re recorded the soundtrack. Um, they've changed some elements of it, like, like well, it will not change, but they've used some different instruments here and there, and it gives some things a different sound. For the most part, the soundtrack sounds fantastic. It doesn't sound too different, it just sounds like it was in the original, but just better. There are occasions, I will say, um, was, I think it was, it's the bet the polar bear theme in Crash 2. Uh, some changes where, I, I can't remember what it's off the top of my head, what the audio sounds like, but, yeah, the audio, the, the new soundtrack in some areas like that place, it doesn't work as well, I think, I think just sometimes, because they, they use synthesizers a lot in the new soundtrack, and it, it doesn't work quite as well as the original raw instruments that Joshua Mansell used in the original trilogy, but, I think overall, for the most part, that um, I, I I like I really like the new music. I do wish they had the option to have the old soundtracks, but like the uncompressed versions, because I know Joshua Mansell on his SoundCloud puts up the original music tracks uncompressed, like before they were horribly bit crushed to fit on a PS1 disc. You can find them before that, and that they sound really cool. I wish there was an option to have that instead. Well, just the option would have been nice. Presentation wise, I think it's fantastic. I love the new style, the new sound, everything about it, it just really works. And I think the presentation could work going forward for a new Crash game. So yeah, let's get to each Crash game individually. So Crash 1, oh thank God, Crash 1. God bless you, Insane Trilogy, for Crash 1. I don't want to sound too negative here, but I think, uh, so some people may disagree, but I think the majority will agree with me in saying that the original Crash 1, oh, well, at least uh, I don't think it's dated that well at all. It's, uh, God, playing it now, especially after playing the Insane Trilogy version of Crash 1, 
I just, I can't even touch the old Crash one again. It's so dopey and stiff and just horrible to play now that it, it, it just goes to show how big of a difference these remakes can make. The original Crash one, again, I think also because I played it after the, after the two sequels, which are much better games, I think. Um, it just, it really dampened my experience from the get-go. Not to mention all the horrible things, like, I'm a guy who likes to use the analog stick most of the time, except for on the, um, the, the, um, side perspective levels. Uh, I use the D-pad on those, but for the most part, I do use the analog stick, and because Crash 1 does not support the analog stick, that was a big turn off for me from the get-go. But just, oh, the more heavy and sluggish control style of the original Crash 1 is, god, it's horrible to describe. It's like, I think Kai Icarus, again, mentioning him, he, he knows his stuff with Crash. But, um, he did like a, when he was talking about Crash 1 in a video review, he talks about, he did like this like thing with like a coin on a string. And like, yeah, he perfectly summed up how Crash controlled in the original version. It's just too heavy and too dopey. And, oh my god, not to mention awful, awful stuff like the save system. Fuck that. And how the fact that you can only get a gem if you if you break all boxes without dying in every level, that just sucks. And thankfully, the N Saint Trilogy version of Crash 1 fixes all of these. The new controls work so much better for Crash in Crash 1. Oh my god. That on its own just heightens the experience so much more. And also, oh my god, being able to save anywhere at any time, thank fuck. The addition of a box counter, the fact that you can now die and still get the gem, thank god, although, uh, yeah, actually no, there is the exception on the colour gem levels. Although I don't mind it so much on the colour gem levels, because the controls, um, the new control scheme makes it so much easier, I, it, it's a lot more tolerable and it's really not that bad, and because it's only on the colour gem levels, I think it's fine. But yeah, with Crash 1, I think, oh, it just, it just does it so much better in the Insane Trilogy version. I don't, again, I said I can't go back to the original after playing the Insane Trilogy version. It, it's just so much better. I don't really know much about the patches and tweaks, whether or not it's fixed certain things mechanics-wise. Um, I'm not too sure about that, so I can't really comment on that. I, I've not really noticed the difference at all in between my different playthroughs. But all I can say is that with Crash 1, yeah, it's certainly fantastic. However, yes, the one complaint about the the insane trilogy crash one that I have that I brought up in my um, bite size review. It's the fucking time trials. Now, I get what Vicarious Visions are trying to do. They're trying to apply that concept to all three games because in Crash 3, I really like the time trials. It, it requires you to have a much more, shall we say, in depth know how of the level. You need to know all its obstacles and the timing of the hazards, you need to know it very well, you need to learn the level so that you can rush through it and get the best time possible. I think it's a really good challenge and test your knowledge of the game. However, with Crash 3, those levels were designed with the time trial aspect in mind. Crash 1, as we all know, is much more constrictive and the platforming is a lot, is a lot more timing based, shall we say. It's a lot more slower, slower paced, it, it's not designed to be rushed. And so when you put time trial challenges in there where you have to rush, oh god, I, I, it really doesn't work. And the relics on Crash 1, because to get the trophy, um, I have platinumed all three Crash games on PS4. My god, getting the gold relics, j just even the golds, not... Forget the platinum, the golds on their own are a fucking challenge and then some. My god, they, those were stressful, it was so, so stressful on Crash 1. Native Fortress, Sunset Vista, The High Road, Slippery Climb, Stormy Ascent, I'll get to Stormy Ascent in a minute, don't worry. All those levels, oh, they really gave me a fucking bollocking. I, I get it, they're trying to give more content and trying to apply that sort of replay replayability factor that Crash 3 had to the other two games. Um, Crash 2, I think, gets away with it a bit more, not, not perfectly in my opinion, but in some instances I do think Crash 2 gets away with it a lot more since the level design is a lot more akin to Crash 3. And, and even then, they do give you the um, Crash Dash power-up, so I, I kind of see where they're coming from there. But in Crash 1, it just doesn't work, I don't think, and it, it, it's so much more frustrating than it is fun, and oh my god, I cannot tell you, I, I think I actually came close to breaking a controller um, when I was doing the high road time trial. Fuck that man, seriously, fuck that. But yeah, getting on to something I just mentioned, Stormy Ascent. So this is the first piece of um, new content, and it dropped not long after the game released. I'm trying to think it was, um, what was it, it was early August, about a month and a bit after the Ensign Trilogy released. It was 
not long after, and uh, I was really surprised. So yeah, Stormy Ascent, it was a level that was um, one of the many cut levels from Crash 1, but aside from the other cut levels that were just sort of, sort of um, in the works prototypes, Stormy Ascent was actually finished. It was a finished complete level, it mechanically worked fine, but um, Naughty Dog chose to remove it because apparently it was too hard. Uh, and uh, I can, you can definitely see what they mean, it's certainly fucking hard. But yeah, Vicarious Visions decided to bring that back and actually give it a proper release in the End Saint trilogy, which is fantastic, and they released it for free as well. Um, I don't think it's free anymore, I think it's £1.99, it's a bit of shit, but to have it for free on release for Activision, that's pretty good for Activision standards, I will say. So yeah, what do I think of Stormy Ascent? Whoo, it's... It's hard. Very hard. I mean, yeah, going into this, you have to expect this is a very difficult level. Um, this is a, a another level akin to Slippery Climb, which is a very hard level to begin with. Um, and Stormy Ascent being the harder version, oh my god, it is ruthless. Even just trying to get through this level alone for the box gem can be a challenge all on its own. A lot of the platforming challenges are based around timing. You really need to get the timing of some of these challenges down and they can be hard. Sometimes you have to wait a long time for um, just just the right timing so like you can get through a obstacle safely. Or sometimes obstacles are moving very quickly and you need to rush through them perfectly without falling once in order to get through it and oh, it, it can get intense. Even the bonus level, even the bonus level is quite surprising. It's like a little puzzle, the bonus level. Like, you've got to jump on the TNT crate and then you have to time it so that you jump off just at the last second because there's nowhere else to jump. So you have to wait for it at the last second so it blows up the um, exclamation crate so it creates a platform for you. Uh, stuff like that I find really good. It's a bit more, shall we say, uh, what, what, what's, what's the word? It's just a bit more interesting, a bit more clever level design for Crash Bandicoot. And oh my god, the fucking time trial on Stormy Ascent. Again, with the pre-mentioned issues I have with Crash 1 and its time trials, Stormy Ascent, oh, fuck, oh. Uh, Stormy Ascent is a level where you need to take time and you really need to be careful with these because these obstacles either require you to wait until just the right opportunity or just rush through it completely without failing once. And doing that with a time trial under pressure where you have to do it within a certain time limit, it's hard. And this is a long level as well, probably I'd say, yeah, probably the longest in Crash 1. It, it can get a bit frustrating to say the least. Um, it took me about, what, three hours to get just the gold relic on this? I, I could not be asked to go for Platinum, seriously. If you have Platinumed all three of these games, credit to you. I do not have that patience. I Yeah, I've got some Platinum relics throughout, dabbled over the three games, but um, I, I mostly just went for the gold because... I, I, I'm not willing to go through months of therapy <laughs> to deal with that. But overall, Stormy Ascent, yeah, I think it's a great level. It's, yeah, yeah, again, it's challenging. We knew what to expect. Naughty Dog cut it for a reason. I, I don't think it's necessary to have cut it. I can't imagine what that level would have been like in the original Crash with that horrible, dopey control style. I can just imagine that's very nightmarish to think about, actually. But overall, yeah, I think Stormy Ascent is a great level, and I really appreciate Vicarious Visions taking these old levels and re bringing, well, bringing them back. We'll just re fully giving them the release and attention they deserve. I think it's fantastic. I apologize for the weariness in my voice. I've been sitting here talking for a while now because I've had to do multiple takes, and <laughs> it, it, it doesn't do good for your throat. So I've just been taking gaps and taking some drinks of water in between, and ugh. God, my throat hurts. But yeah, on to Crash Bandicoot 2. And Crash Bandicoot 2 is, and still is to this day, my favorite in the original trilogy. I, um, I know there's this debate which one's better between Crash 2 and 3, but I think Crash 2, since it's more focused on the platforming, which is Crash's main, it's what, it's what it does best. I think I, I like Crash 2 more. It, granted, it does double in vehicles here and there with the polar bear sections, but it doesn't overdo them like Crash 3 does, I think. But yeah, Crash 2, I only think the um, the Ensign Trilogy only does good to it. Um, I can't say there's anything hugely different. Like, with Crash 1, you can certainly feel the difference because of how different, how just how much of an improvement the new control style makes to Crash 1, considering how, again, how awful and dopey the original was. With Crash 2, you can't really notice that as much. Although, one thing I will say, Crash 2, I actually died a lot more in the Insane Trilogy version of Crash 2 than I did in Crash 1. I was quite surprised at that. I was expecting Crash 1 to be the hardest, but no. 
I died quite a lot in Crash 2 in the end Saint Trilogy version. I was quite surprised. I'm not sure if that was just me, if, if my timing was off, or I don't know if it was harder than, harder than I remember. I, I, I don't know, but yeah, I, I died quite often in Crash 2 in the Insane Trilogy version. But again, there's not too many changes with Crash 2. Crash 2 and Crash 3 were very good games, to be, very, very refined good games to begin with. And so the Insane Trilogy, the remake, doesn't really do... It can't, it can't really do a whole lot except improve it graphics-wise and add in the new control scheme. And again, I still love it. it. It's still the same old brilliant Crash 2 that I love, and it's fantastic. I do maybe wish they had altered the boss fights a bit. Crash 2 has some of the, probably I'd say out of the original trilogy, the weakest boss fight. I mean, uh, Cortex's final boss is, is just fucking dreadful. I, I do kind of wish, because in Crash 1, they added like, they made Papu Papu's health bar a bit longer. I wish they'd done more tweaks like that to the other bosses. Even in Crash 1, I wish they just made slight different changes like that. Just to make them, I don't know, maybe add slight changes within their attack patterns just to make it a bit more interesting. Because Crash 2 especially had, um, it just had, the boss fights were pants essentially and, well, well not bad, but just compared to the rest of the trilogy, especially Crash 3, the boss fights just paled in comparison. I don't know, I only wish they would have done slight tweaks to them to make them just a bit more interesting and more challenging, per se. And again, the time trials. Um, There were certainly moments of frustration, I think especially in the sewer levels, I got a bit frustrated. I can't remember which one it was specifically. I did spend a while on because, ugh. Again, Crash 2 wasn't, still wasn't necessary. Even though the level design is still more akin to Crash 3, the level design was still not designed with time trials in mind. And so still in some instances, the time trials can get frustrating and feel out of place. But not as bad as it is in Crash 1. In some areas, it feels absolutely fine actually. But because they give you the Crash Dash, I think it certainly helps. And because the level design, as I said, I've said this a million times already, because it's more akin to Crash 3, the openness of the levels allow for the for the more rushed time trial gameplay to work a lot better than did in, in the more restricted and more narrow levels of Crash 1. But yeah, aside from that, there's not really much more I can say about Crash 2. It's it's Crash 2. It's still to this day, and even with the Insane Trilogy version, my favourite of the original trilogy. And I don't know what more I can say about it. And finally, Crash 3. And I think most people can agree, Crash 3 was the one that felt the least changed. I mean, Crash 3, mechanics-wise, was definitely the most refined of the three. And so they didn't really need to do a lot. Albeit, there were one or two changes with some of the vehicle controls that I wasn't a big fan of. Actually, well, no, I take that back. Some of the vehicle changes were actually really good. Some of the others, not so much. I'll get into that a bit more. But yeah, Crash 3, um, it's still... Crash 3, again, like Crash 2, I don't know what I can say. The original Crash 3 was still very well polished, and so there's not much the remake could have done to improve on it, except give it the much nicer presentation and the new control scheme. Fucking phones ringing. But yeah, Crash 3 was already very well refined to begin with, so there's not much they could have done to improve on it. Now, as I just said, there are some changes in the vehicle controls that were better, but some instances where it was worse, I'd say. Um, I think in terms of worse, I think we can all agree, oh, the jet ski, oh my god, what the fuck did they do? Uh, I remember watching when um, Kadokris and Some Call Me Johnny did their collab when the, for the Insane Trilogy, Kadokris just ranted about the jet ski controls and I couldn't agree more. They are, for some reason, I don't know why, they just made them so oversensitive. The original Crash 3 was um was fine. Yeah, it still felt like a jet ski, but it didn't slide all over the place and all that. And with the time trials in Crash 3, I think this is the case because, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the time trial times in Crash 3 are different to how they were in the original because they've got, because it's new developers, they, they recorded and made new developer records. And so the time trial times were there to reflect were changed to reflect the new developer records and the time trial times and I think they ended up being a bit more tight shall we say a bit more harder I think is the word to put it and in certain levels especially hot fucking Coco um yeah the jets to controls only serve as an inconvenience it, it's uh, they, they weren't great and again there were I, I really wish they'd have fixed the motorbike control granted I can kind of I kind of get it because those levels are designed with that sort of bit more restrictive control scheme of the motorbike if you get what I mean like when you turn he really doesn't turn that much it, it, it takes his time you really have to keep holding on to turn a lot it, it, it's hard to explain but I think you get what I mean I kind of wish maybe they'd have altered it a bit but 
I can kind of see because of the way it, the levels are designed that control scheme is there to fit with that design so uh, it's not too much of an issue but again it's just a little nitpick uh, but one thing it really improved on was the um the plane controls the plane controls weren't horrible in Crash 3 but they certainly just felt a lot more responsive and smooth in this game uh, the, the last level rings of power is so much fun to go through because of the new controls oh it's just the button swooping its oh, eye, it's, it's really good. But yeah, aside from that, I can't think of much changes that the NSA trilogy did to Crash 3 that I can really talk about, um, with the exception of the brand new level Future Tense. Now, I was quite surprised when I heard about this, like a brand new Crash level, like that, that Vicarious Visions completely developed from scratch. Granted, I heard it did take some inspiration from a cut level from Crash 1, a waterfall level, I think. And I think there was like these spinning platforms and they took some of that, like, some of those ideas and put them into this level. But for the most part, it's a completely new level that Vicarious Visions have designed themselves. And after playing it, it's a really damn good level. And I think it gives me so much faith that if there were to be a brand new Crash game and it was to be developed by Vicarious Visions, I would have the utmost faith in them. What they've done here is created a, what would realistically be a much more late game level in, in, in a potential new Crash game. What I love about Future Tense is that it's very well designed. It is challenging, first off, but it's very well designed in the sense that it really utilizes Crash's special abilities that well. That's what, that's the thing with Crash 3, um, you get the new abilities, but there's very few times where your abilities come in that what well, they, they, they need to come into play. They're essential as such. Like the bazooka can be quite useful in Crash 3 at, at certain times if you're in a sticky spot, but it's not essential. This level requires you to use your powers in different ways like the tornado jump the double jump you you really have to use them a lot more and uh, there's some great little design choices like um obstacles that you can only see in the reflection of things like there's even a hidden box um in the reflection and you have to spin an enemy into the foreground and you can see it in the reflection hitting the box i think that was a great idea that's a really cool little touch I, they did one thing they've done that's really good branching paths now it, it, it's not that extreme i i, I it, it's like I, the only time there's a couple times there's one when you got the first lift and you turn back there's just a little bit there um it's more so evident when you do the death route there's that little path getting to the death route on this is a challenge in itself when you get up that little path to go to the death route it's it's, it's, it's a split path and i, I really like that idea I, it, it just it does something just a bit more interesting with the level design that crash hasn't really done or, or at least not in the original trilogy's gameplay and i really like it and oh my god the death route and the death route the death route is really good i really like it it's very well designed it just Vicarious Visions just got really creative with this level. And again, oh, the, 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 the relic. Yeah, the relic, again, is very difficult. Um, it's not no nowhere near as some of like the Crash 1 relics and all that, but um, it's certainly difficult because you really have to utilize your powers and you really have to get the timing down. Uh, this cause this isn't this isn't an easy level. Vicarious Visions have gone out their way to make this quite a challenging level. And yeah, I think if anything, Future Tense shows that Vicarious Visions are certainly the people to go to when it comes to a brand new Crash game. I mean, it just goes to show they ha they understand and know how good crash level design works. And if there is any potential crash games in the future, I can only hope that it's once again them on the project because with this they have more than proved themselves. And yeah, that's Crash Bandicoot the End Saint Trilogy. Again, there wasn't too much to talk about here that's been improved over a year with, except with the DLC stuff. And again, I still stick by it. I absolutely love it and I, at the risk of... Uh, um getting a few negative comments um i still think it's the definitive way to play these games i know some people still prefer the ps1 versions but for me having all three of these games upscaled remastered um with the great presentation the new control scheme which i still really like all together and for a cheap price as well it's you can get this game for me about was it 20 quid 30 quid around there that's a very good price and if you haven't tried the crush bandicoot series before i would urge you to give it a go because it's just some of the most fun yet simple and enjoyable platforming i've ever played crash is something that's near and dear to my heart so yeah yeah there's going to be bias there but i would seriously recommend it if you are considering it and i certainly hope that crash's future is bright because the insane trilogy has done very well when it came out initially on the ps4 um, it sold fantastically and a year later when it came out for other consoles and PC 
the sales, it got to the top of the charts again. And it's just fantastic to see that. Well, think about it, a linear, a linear 3D platformer of all things. Like not a, no, not a open-ended explorable one, a linear 3D platformer got to number one in the charts in today's video game industry. I think that's fucking amazing. And it just goes to show that people still love Crash. And I think Activision are not stupid. They're definitely gonna take advantage of this. And I think Crash's future is very bright. Now, I know there has been leaks of um, a potential Crash Team Racing remaster by Vicarious Visions. I would love to see that. I think they would do a fantastic job. And of course, we've also got Spyro down the line. Granted, that's not being made by Vicarious Visions. It's being made by, um, ah, oh, shit, who is it? Oh, to Toys for Bob. And um, they helped make the Endsane Trilogy. And again, Spyro Trilogy looks fantastic as well. And I also think a new Crash game would be fantastic as well. And would it be in the same style of the three Crash games? Would it be a different deal? Maybe... Maybe a bit like Twin Sanity, maybe? I, I don't know. I would be very interested to see where they take Crash from here in terms of a new title. But yeah, that is my video on a year old. I'm sorry if there were some parts in this video that seemed a bit waffly and rambly. Again, this is the first time I've done something very unscripted, so I'm just sort of rambling off the top of my head here. And again, yeah, I'm sorry my throat or my articulation, if you couldn't understand me clearly. Um, talk, I've been talking like this for a while and it, oh God, it just it just gets to your throat. And yeah, my throat is feeling a bit hoarse right now. But yeah, I think a year on, Crush Bandicoot, the Endsane Trilogy still holds up fantastically well. And it is the perfect way to play the original three games. And I still stand by my 10 out of 10 rating. I love it. It's one of my favorite games of all time, the Insane Trilogy now. But thank you very much for watching, everybody. Please do give feedback, because I'm not so sure if this video format's going to work. Um, I hope it will, because it does mean that it will be a nice thing to fill in when I have not really played any modern games, and I'm not currently working on a sort of more heavily edited review. I can crank out one of these, and because it's good, because it gives me an excuse to play um, another modern game that I've played that I played maybe about a year ago again. It's, it's very fun to do that, to go through a game again. I certainly hope to do more of these in the future. So thank you very much for watching, everybody. Uh, please feel free to like and subscribe with it if you feel so obliged to. It's your choice. Once again, thank you very much for watching, everybody, and I'll see you in the next video.